Hey guys, Paul from Asha Phoenix. It's a new comic book day for the week of November 2nd, and we're going to get started right now. This episode brought to you by Paul and Tim Do a Thing. We we do a thing. We're technically doing a thing now. I mean, technically, but we actually do like an official thing on the other channel. Um, new music dropping every week, all that kind of fun stuff. Check it out. Hey guys, Tim from the comic book store, Team Ash and Paul and Tim Do a Thing, and Capes and Scowls. How you doing? When's the last time you heard Santana's voice? I don't think I've ever heard it. Paul, you never heard it, right? I don't think I have. Does it exist? Is the man a mute? I don't know. It's one of those weird things I wanted to throw out into the, the universe. If Santana plays in the woods, does he make a sound? <laughs> you knew it was going to go that far. Don't, don't look disappointed. You knew that's where it was going to go. You did. So, I really like you being farther away. This is nice. Thanks. You're welcome. Trades! I've got a hardcover, young adult kind of reader about Sherlock Holmes that's pretty cool. I've got, who is the man in the air? It's Jordan. Air Jordan. It's about Michael. We have Night of the Living Cat manga, which I think is everybody turns into a cat. I don't remember. But uh, I know I ordered it because I was like, heh, <laughs> cats. Um, Spider-Gwen, unmasked. This covers... The 2015, second 2015 one, because Secret Wars, uh, issues 24 to 34. We've got a Minecraft open world. These Minecraft ones, kids seem to really dig them. They tell me all the time. Venom, Deviation, this is volume two with uh, by uh, Al Ewing, um, collecting issues six through ten of the most recent series. We got Batgirl, this is a thick one, the volume one. Issues one through six, as well as two issues, three issues of Batman. That's pretty cool. We have Spider-Man 2099 Exodus. This features that miniseries and a bunch of one-shots as well. Who doesn't love Spidey 2099? We got Maestro, World War M. I can't keep up with all the Maestro books that are coming out. I thought this was already out. See, I don't know what I'm talking about. Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser Halcyon Legacy. Which I'm just waiting for somebody to name their kid that. Uh, the entire miniseries is there. It's a good name, Paul. Paul's staring off into space. He's not listening to me. X-Men Red Volume 1. Because this happens every 12 months. Ice Cream Man Volume 8. Ice Cream Man is weird as hell. I love it when people are like, how do you describe the Ice Cream Man? I'm like, I don't. It's too weird. Uh, the Witcher Ronin. Looks like a manga style witcher story it takes place in edo period japan and it looks like it reads like a manga from right to left or they stapled the cover on backwards and critical role vox machina origins volume three i like that this is still chugging along over at dark horse very cool so that'll get you uh rpg nerds up to date first up we have little monsters issue number seven usually we pick of the week i mean this is pretty good uh, thing, but I mean, uh, this is as you could tell. Battle lines have been drawn. You see, the um, the main characters just not having a good time uh, as things splinter because of blood. Uh, this has a bunch of crazy revelations, and you start to uh, really see the divisions in there. But you also start to see a character that you were not expecting to be the leader actually be the leader um and man it, it's so good i love where this book is going i want to see more uh art has been fantastic the entire time the fact that it's black and white uh for the most part really kind of leaves you uh disoriented because you just don't know what time it is um but man that, that's kind of what this is and uh yeah i want more can't wait all right first up from me we have cherish issue number one from dynamite i'm not familiar with the character so i wanted to check it out i don't apparently this character's been around i'm guessing there's kind of a backstory to her where she's trying to avenge her father who kind of created this technology and then got murdered for it and she has some access to the technology and she has really cool like nanotech kind of um weaponry where she can make like a whip come out of nowhere or she has like a hang glider that can form all kinds of things that are kind of fun uh, the design of the character is very... Uh, Mark Silvestri, I believe, created the design, if I read that correctly. Um, 
When you get a book like this, you're like, it's either going to be awesome or it's just going to be fan service. This is not fan service. It's pretty good. It had a very cool espionage story to it. Um, and I had a good time reading it. I thought the art was good. I thought the story was good. And I'm curious to see where it goes. Um, it's got vibes of some other stories I really liked. You know, like I really enjoyed Madame Mirage. This is a similar kind of story. So I'm in on it. We'll see where it goes. It could be very interesting. Her weaponry is super cool. And that is definitely one of the high points of the book for me. What is my pick of the week? It is Batman and the Joker, the Deadly Duo. The art in this book is just breathtaking. Uh, Mark Silvestri has always done an amazing job, but man, he really, he really outdid himself in this book. It is like, the writing is solid. But the art is so good, it's almost distracting sometimes. Like, it's that good. Basic concept is uh, Harley has been kidnapped. Uh, we don't know by what. Uh, but we got kind of a clue. And Batman is responding to some uh, very gruesome crimes. And we are battling a Joker-esque uh, villain that is just... On, a, on another level as far as like strength and he has to team up with the Joker to uh, to fix things and obviously you know how that's going to be this was this is very much a setup book you did get to see basically where this is going to go but uh, there was a lot of setup in here but man the writing was spectacular the art was breathtaking um, the inks were, were awesome it, it very much felt like a 90s book as far as like the the uh, art style but man, that nostalgia really kicked in. But it was also a very good story. So, um, yeah, I'd say grab it. Definitely grab this book. All right, now it's time for my pick of the week. Paul, do you know what my pick of the week is? I have no idea. You're a liar. You know. Do I? He knows. I don't. It is. For the bit's purposes, I don't. We might have had to do a second take for reasons beyond our control, so he does actually know. But I know. I, I could have completely forgotten. You, do you know you forgot the name already? Yes, actually. Boy, wow. Name. He's barely paying attention. I barely was. Anywho, it's Nature's Labyrinth. Okay, I do know now. Yes, from I, Mad Cave. But I genuinely did forget. Uh, doesn't surprise me at all. Nature's Labyrinth from Mad Cave. Uh, I generally do enjoy Mad Cave books quite a bit. Um... Zach Thompson is your writer. And we have kind of like this weird story where it's mixing little bits of things we've seen before and making something new and original with it. It's a bunch of people who accept a cruise that seems really shady and they don't seem to care. They go have a nice time on this cruise. At some point, the captain comes in and he goes, you guys are idiots. You shouldn't be here. We're going to take you to an island. There's a big maze and you're going to have to try to get through the maze. And if you do, you win a bunch of money, but you're probably going to die. That is your your basic point. Uh, but they kind of get the rules covered pretty well here as, as well, really early. Uh, Bailey Underwood is your artist. Really cool art. Um, I mean, just look at the cover. like It's very cool. And you do get some sweeping kind of nature shots, and you get to see how big, roughly, the maze is. But the characters are what really makes this super good, and the execution of these kind of things that we've seen before. Like I said, this isn't like a crazy original idea, but because of how it's executed, it's going to be. By the end, I'm going to have no clue where this is going, and I am very excited for that. So, I think this is definitely going to be one to watch. Mad Cave is always good. Definitely check that out. All right, guys, that is it. Thank you for tuning in again. Make sure you go check out Paul and Tim Do a Thing, and Paul has a new Campfire Ashes going out this week. Next week. Next week. Not this week at all. Next week. Next week. Paul leans over. We need to take a break. Paul needs a break, so check him out next week. I think I did it right, Paul. Anyways, that's it. Thank you for coming in. Uh, let us know if you've ever seen Carlos Santana talk, or if you can better yet point us to a video link in the comments below. That would be great. Um, I'm sure he's done interviews, but like, I just no one's ever heard it, right? I'm sure he's done interviews. Does he sing in a song though? That would be cool. I just wonder if he has this weird voice and he's just like, nope, I play the guitar. <laughs> Gonna get real good at that guitar. Anyways, I'd just like to know. Okay, bye.